I've done a lot of throwing into trees and bringing up antennas into trees. I don't know, I've probably done it at least 75, 80 times, which is, you know, that's a lot for me because I work a lot. But anyway, let's go through some scenarios where I do this and I'll tell you what the way and how I do it. I'll even show you how I tie and some ideas to maybe help you out. And let's have some fun while we're doing it. Because remember, we're all just kids at heart. Try not to take this too seriously because I'm just having fun. Okay, so I drive up my super cool car and I get out and I go to a park bench, okay? And I want to find a good bench to operate from my ham radio. So I want to talk to you about the types of twine that you can throw into a tree. Now, from my experience, because I've tried and failed, you want to get as thin as twine as possible. Now, I can't tell you where I got this because I got it at Hamvention. This guy sells it out in the used area for $5 per 150 feet. And I get it there. I don't know where else to get it. Super thin. But the reason you want thin is because the first thing I did is I started studying the arborists. If you don't know what an arborist is, they're the people that climb trees and they cut limbs and they risk their lives or they care about trees and all that. And they're very good at climbing trees. And I stole some of their ideas, which you're going to learn in this video, from them. But what I did learn is, is that I went out and I bought some arborist twine, right? And it was thick like this. And so the first thing I did was I got a weight. These, these weights are really good, by the way. You, you do need a ring, and I'll tell you why in a minute. You don't have to have a ring, but you it's a good idea, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so you tie this on here, and you throw it over. Just pretend like this is one of the... I couldn't find any heavy, heavy, heavy twine. So here's what happened. I threw it over, right, and it went like this, Zzz, and it stopped because there was so much friction in this heavy twine that I couldn't get it to come down. So I'm like, come on, man, come down. There just wasn't enough weight. And so you think, well, why don't you just add weight? Well, guess what? It's really hard to throw 12 ounces into a tree 40 feet up. It's really hard. Go and try it, and I'll tell you, it is not easy. So that being said, I use about 9 ounces. Now, so I threw this stuff away. I got this thin twine, and guess what it does? You tie it on here. That's not the correct knot. That's not the correct knot, but I tie it on here. I'll show you the correct knot later. I, I swing it and throw it. And it goes over maybe two or three or four branches and so it'll go like this Zzz, super good it zips through the trees like that now it is very important not to have any knots in your twine because it will get caught and be very hard to pull out it'll go it'll get caught in any kind of branch and go like this Zzz, and it will hang here and you will have a big problem okay it is very important not to have knots in your twine. Here's the two options that I recommend or practice quite often. So the first thing I do is I throw my twine out of the box. So I find a picnic table like this and I walk up and I pull my box open. I'll show you all of that later. I tie this weight on, which I'm going to discard for now, and I swing and I throw it to a place where I think is a good position. So what I really want, typically, and it's a hard thing to get, is I want a really high branch that's almost vertical. I like to be vertical, and it's a very hard thing to be vertical in a tree. I will tell you that right now. Because it's hard to get anything over 40 feet without some help. If you just throw it on your own without a slingshot, and the trees only go about 50, 60 feet or whatever in this area, so it's very difficult to get vertical. So it's actually probably better just to throw your twine, tie it off, and go and go like a sloper like this. So let's take an example. Here's my picnic table. I tie the weight on. I swing and I throw it, and it goes way too far. Very often it'll do that. It'll go like that. And this thin twine will almost always go zzzz and just stop and just hang like that. Okay. So now I have two options. Here, this white twine is my antenna. I can either tie it here and pull it up on that side. I could tie it here and pull it up on this side. Most often, I'm kind of lazy and I just tie it off here. Don't pay attention to these knots right now because they're not correct. And I will pull this up 
I'll pull my antenna up to there, and then I'll come around here and tie it off somewhere. Just pretend like I tied it off. And then I'll come and grab my antenna, and I'll take it to my table, and I'll bungee cord it here. That's why in some of my videos you see me pushing my table. You'll see me pushing the table away. It's to get this tight. Ah, QRP is fun, isn't it? You don't have to have it tight. It's okay to let it let it hang a little bit like that. In fact, the new high fin high end fed I just got says it is not necessary to pull the antenna very tight. It is better for the wire to hang loose. This is for my high end fed. So this is telling you something that I didn't even know. I always wanted to pull it tight, but it's okay to just let it hang like that, okay? Let it hang. Don't worry too much because when you let it when you pull it tight, it causes some problems. Okay, let's take the other scenario. Now something else you could do is you could go and tie it off over here. You would tie it off over on that side, right? You would undo the weight because you really don't need and need to pull that weight up. You need to make a, a, an executive decision on that because weight does help you. And then you would pull it up like on this side and now you've got an antenna hanging like that. That's the antenna, that's your twine. You tie it off to your table and you're good to go. Now, let's suppose you want to operate from this table again. Another thing you could do is go on the opposite side of the tree. Find a nice branch and throw it over the branch like this and now you have a very excellent solution. You can undo this, take your antenna, somehow tie it here. Now you've got your antenna, you need to unwind it. And then you pull, you pull up your antenna here, and now you're good to operate, and all you have is this. That's another good way to do it. I've done that before also. Now, let me tell you why I do not like inverted V's. <laughs> now, I bought the K9 ARV inverted V, and I quickly found out that that was a mistake. And here's why. Here's what happens. So I put my weight on here, right? I threw it over the tree. Now, I've got this hanging here. Guess what? An inverted V is like this. Everything's fine so far. And so I pulled it up, and the first thing that started happening was, let's put some weight on this over here. Guess what happened? So, just so you know, I love inverted Vs. They're freaking awesome. They do a great job. But this started happening. They started twisting. I finally got them out. And guess what? Now you've got to do something. You've got to do another contact point and another contact point and it needs to be up off the ground. So what do you have to do? You have to have more, you have to have another insulator between here and your antenna and here and your antenna, right? Here's your inverted V, right there. But the problem is, now you also have to run coax from your, from your table all the way up here to the center feed point. Absolutely love inverted Vs. They're freaking very good antennas. But setting them up in the field is a pain in the ass because you've got to throw it over. You've got to have a point here, a point here. They can't touch the ground. They need to be up and off the ground like that. And they're just really, really hard to set up. I do not recommend doing an inverted V ever out in the field unless you are going to be out there for a long time, like for several days. That's why an infed like this is so much easier. You just throw it over, pull it up, and you're done.
90 feet tall, if not 100. Dude, I sailed it over. Just hit. Sailed it over that tree. Wasn't even close. I sailed it over. This gigantic tree. My beanbag cleared it. I saw it land. Glad it's orange. I can't find it. Dude. You see how far that thing can shoot? This is the other side of the tree. 